everybody. Welcome to another episode of uh, Bigfoot Tales. I'm your host, Dan, the Bigfoot Dan. I'm coming to you from the glorious coastline of the state of Maine. And, uh, you know, as we go through uh, a lot of the different sub-subjects of uh, this genre we call cryptozoology, there's a lot of uh, strange things that we come across, and we have no way of knowing for sure whether they're fact or fiction, um, whether or not they're, uh, you know, a totally made-up thing. Um, or whether it was based upon some truth. And, you know, we get a lot of questions as to, um, from the evolutionary or evolutionist uh, camp, as to, you know, just how old dinosaurs are and things like that. Every now and again, you come across a legend or piece of folklore that, uh, describes what seems to be possibly a dinosaur or something from that time that, you know, according to the so-called experts, um, became extinct millions of years ago or so. Um, but, you know, you have to wonder exactly uh, how true that is because nobody was around to see that happen. And there is no absolute proof as to when all of these things happened. Um, you know, something that a they claim occurred a million years ago might just as very easily have occurred, you know, a thousand years ago. Nobody was there to see it actually happen. Uh, so there is no um, irrefutable proof as to that. But <clears throat> uh, all that aside, I come to this story that I came across the other day out of the uh, newspaper called The Sun. It's from um, uh, May 28th of 1899. It was a uh, Sunday. And... The paper's name, of course, is called the Sun. It's uh, don't. It's not the same Sun that many people think of today. Um, they're a defunct publication now. But I came across this uh, uh, story as I'm doing some of my Pamula research. Um, it's titled "An Indian Devil's Visit," and it's of a, uh, a gentleman of some. Um, he's some sort of a. Uh, Immigrant. I'm not sure where he's from. His name is uh, 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 Nicholas, and uh, that's his last name. His full name is actually Alexander Nicholas, but uh, in this uh, particular article, I, they simply call him Nicholas. Um, judging by the way they wrote this, I'm thinking that um, he might be uh, some sort of uh, possibly Prussian uh type of uh, immigrant I'm, I'm not really sure um some of these uh words that they uh put in these older uh, publications are questionable um as to how they actually put them you don't know whether they actually talk like that or not um what they're trying to do is exaggerate the um accent of the person that's speaking and when these old writers did that um they uh, uh sometimes can put a different voice to the words that are on paper than, than what they would have in real life. But at any rate, we're going to talk today a little bit about uh, saber-toothed tiger and uh, did they actually become extinct millions of years ago or hundreds of thousands of years ago or however some, you know, book-bound, uh, you know, archaeologist or, or wants to, to claim it was. It's really hard to tell again because nobody was there to see it happen. Um, however, um, let me just uh, go into this uh, uh, article. It's titled, An Indian Devil's Visit. Subheaded, Nicholas tells of a meeting with a legendary beast. And the primary uh, uh, topper is the bulletproof power of the main woods that only a thunderbolt can slay. The hidden and also the scientific theory of the giant black tooth. And this supposedly, uh, as an aside here, is actually uh, something that is in existence. I've never seen it, but um, if I have time this year, I'm going to uh, try to track this down and see if it's actually true, um, if it's still around somewhere, and, and what the story is behind that. Um, again, this is from, you know, 150 years ago, so it might be a little bit difficult to find, but back to the story. <coughs> It's a byline Old Town, Maine, of May 26. And again, this comes from the year 1899. Him come some more. Last time I seen him. Big, big like some moose, 12, 20 feet long. 
Him too shine like some icicle on the house gutter. Him grow more big as the locomotive holler. Him Pumula this time for sure. I seen him. The stolid faces of the Indians who heard Alexander Nicholas tell of his meeting with an Indian devil while trapping muskrats on the shores of Abal Stream at the base of Mount Katahdin did not relax a muscle as the tale went on at interminable length. As he was a practical-minded Indian, without a trace of imagination, his hearers knew he was not cap capable of inventing a lie, and the conviction grew that the storyteller had either seen an Indian devil in the flesh, or some strolling woodsman had played a practical joke upon him. As well as he can remember, the animal appeared to him on a May night, coming within ten rods of the campfire, near which he was sitting skinning muskrats. As nearly as he could, intimate, the visitor was fully fifteen feet long from tip to tip. It was not a panther, because panthers are of the color of fresh iron rust, while the collar was prettily barred with stripes of slate gray and brown. What convinced him that the beast was an Indian devil was the presence of four long white tusks that protruded from the animal's mouth and shone like polished ivory. In all the traditions of the tribe, the men who had seen Indian devils had lived to tell about it, had described them as having great pointed tusks nearly a foot long. I'm, I'm skeen him musquash and smoke him pipe, said Alex as he continued the tale. By and by, I'll have skeen seen, maybe ten and look up. What I see, you think? Mongro. Im all bar, set oop upon im tail, back some dog, and let them chop so seem hungry. What I'm do? What you do? You bin dar, hey? Eh? I throw him one musquash, what I skeen. Him peek him up and eat him knock some sausage. Of course, I throw him some more and some more after them. Which Pamula eat him all? Voila! Musquash, what I skeen all gone. Pamula, him no more. Musquash skin pay twenty five cents at the store. Alex skeen not bring muching nowhere. Musquash skeen mine longs. I have got. My skeen Pamula's pretty damn quick. I throw him musquash, but I don't yet skeen, and by and by Pamula him go away. I go away too, like I scared, and don't wast up trill, I'll get I greet home. But you say now, hey Indian traditions that have been handed down in wigwam tales for centuries differ as to the size, colouring and general habitats of the Indian devil, but all unite in declaring that he has four long incurved canine teeth that hang outside his mouth, giving the creature a most ferocious look. The Abnaki story asserts that a pair of these animals, who are bullet and arrow proof, and defy all weapons except the thunderbolt, live on the steep side of Mount Katahdin, where they kill and eat moose and other large game, taking a sunburned brave or a squaw by way of a dessert whenever one happens to be nearby. As for the whites, an Indian devil will not taste of their flesh. Therefore, while a few Indians have survived a meeting with Pamula, no Caucasian has ever seen one. A century ago, when the Old Town tribe contained more than 1,000 souls, Pamula took five or six Indians as toil every year. In September 1823, a party of 21 braves and squaws were coming down the west branch with 14 canoes loaded with moose and caribou meat when an Indian devil visited them overnight while they camped on the shore of Joe Mary Lake and killed four. The fall rains had swollen the streams and made the current very swift. Though the flood favored the fleeing Indians, Pamula overtook them on the following day, and swimming out, tipped over a canoe in South Twin Lake, drowning two braves and a squaw. The animals swam about in the lake for an hour, waiting for the bodies to come up, and then gave chase to the party. The Indians had passed from Elbow Lake into Millinerket Rips when they saw their enemy behind. There was a brisk gale blowing at the time, and the sky was dark with thunderclouds. As the canoes shot out of the rips into smooth water beyond, the men in the near canoe saw Pamula stretch his striped legs up the trunk of a great yellow birch tree, 
testing his claws upon the hot, tough bark to see if they were sharp enough. When he was stretched out at full length, twice as long as a canoe for four men, a thunderbolt fell, splitting the tree into slivers and filling the air with a sulfurous smoke. As the vapor lifted, they saw the Indian devil lying dead on the bank of a stream. A line of scorched fur marked the passage of the lightning from the animal's nose to its hips, where the current divided and passed down the hind legs to the ground. One of the ivory tusks had been turned coal black by the strike, and others remained untouched. The body was taken to Old Town on two canoes, and for a week the Indians did nothing but celebrate the death of their ancient enemy. The black tooth was given to Saul Sokolexis, who was chief at that time. It is kept as an heirloom in the Sokolexis family. Though somewhat damaged from rough usage, it is eight inches long, and the inside edge is still sharp. Scientific men who have examined the trophy are inclined to believe that it comes from the jaw of the saber-toothed tiger, an animal which geologists say lived in Maine about six million years ago. Opposed to this assertion is the tradition of the Soxalexis family, which declares that the tooth was taken from the upper jaw of an Indian devil that was killed by lightning in September 1823. And that's the end of the story. Um, again, you know, you, you hear a lot of these folklore tales of, uh, you know, as I go through looking for information about what we call Bigfoot today and uh, this ancient, uh, uh, what I call, tribe of uh, people. <clears throat> and uh, finding out more information about them from a folklore aspect. Um, but I come across a lot of these stories where, uh, dinosaurs or extinct animal uh, sounding uh, descriptions are given to many different things. Um, you know, for instance, um, you know, there are, in fact, uh, Indian, and I'll see if I can find some to put up here for you, but there are, in fact, Indian cave or uh, rock carvings or paintings of uh, what we call uh, woolly mammoths. Um, and other large, strange-looking uh, creatures that uh, we call dinosaurs today that supposedly went became extinct millions of years ago. But, uh, you know, this, this, this whole aspect of uh, sifting through all of this folklore uh, at times gets pretty difficult because it's hard to tell what's exaggerated, what's the truth, and what has been changed over the years. But uh, anyhow, I just thought you'd uh, enjoy that little story uh, from uh, the 1800s about a... Uh, possible saber-tooth tiger uh, having been ex in existence um, in Maine in the early 1800s and whether or not um, this particular animal uh, might have uh, led to the uh, existence of the uh, tales of uh, this legendary creature that the Indians called Pamula. And that's it for today, just a short one, and I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I hope you uh, subscribe and come back for more Bigfoot Tales, and until next time, happy squatching. <laughs>